y'all welcome back what is up today is a very different video uh, a little while back I reached that doesn't sound right I got to 1500 subscribers and first of all thank you so much for being here I truly appreciate you being a part of my community I love it the dog is playing I'm gonna let her play I'm sorry if that bothers you um, second of all I said I wanted to do a giveaway when I got to 1500 subscribers so hit that a few weeks ago and asked you guys what size of TN leather TN that you guys would like to see me make for this giveaway I thought it would be kind of cool to get something like specially made for this um, and I thought it would be cool if I made it and like it actually came from my hands and a lot of you guys have been asking me to make a video on how I make my leather nopa covers TN whatever I'm making kind of thing so that's what I did I started making a planner I asked you guys what size you wanted um, a5 one by one vote uh, and a close second was a6 and I ultimately decided to do an A6 planner for two reasons. The first reason being that I didn't have enough leather and I didn't want to wait for leather to come in. And the second reason being that this is one of my favorite sizes and for like everything. I love an A6 planner. I love an A6 journal. I love an A6 TN. Like I like everything in this size. Whereas A5, I like it for a planner. I don't really like journaling in A5, it's too large. I think that A6 is a really, really good size. So this is what I came up with and I really hope you guys like it because I like it a lot and I'm really impressed with how cool this looks and I've never done anything like it. This is the first time I've ever done it and I can't wait to do it again. Um, but yeah, so it's an A6 TN and this is what she looks like. Um, I'm really super proud of it like I just love it so I have this brown leather and it's kind of cool because this is the first leather I ever ordered from OA leather supply and it's this suede leather and it's the softest leather you have ever felt I swear to god it is so incredibly soft I added this accent of this green leather which of course it's not gonna show up in my shitty lighting but it's this beautiful forest green and it's a shinier leather it's like a smooth shiny leather absolutely beautiful um, and I put them together using this X pattern that my aunt actually taught me how to do when she was here the other day with me and I did different thread colors and it looks it one it looks super cool but two it's like the coolest feeling thing ever so incredibly cool um, and this is the inside so on the inside I have two big pockets this one kind of ended up being like a secretarial pocket and that is because I love a raw edge so I decided to leave the raw edge so that's the actual raw edge of the leather and I put in three card slot pockets here it has four elastics. The elastic is a brown color. And then to bring in that green again, I decided to do the back pocket in green. And again, this is the raw edge of the leather. I kept the raw edge how it was. And I put one card pocket in the back here. Guys, it's so cool. Like I'm tooting my own horn 100%, but it looks so cool. And it's just I've never done anything like this before and I just absolutely love it I think it looks so super cute and you can see it on the inside it's just so cool and it's got this little bug bite on it so cool like it already has some character to it I used gray stitching and cream stitching I, I don't know it just like fit I don't know why it shouldn't fit because it's brown leather but Oh, it just looks so cool. It's so cool. I can't. So yeah, so this is my 1500 subscribers giveaway uh, planner that I'm going to give to you guys. And I may throw in some extras. You guys know me. I'll throw in some extras. 
But yeah, if you would like to win this planner, I'm gonna ask you to do a few things. I'll have this all in the description bar as well. If you'd like to win this planner, I would love for you to be subscribed to me. I'd love for you to leave me a comment about how you're gonna use this planner. Like, are you gonna use it as a journal? Are you gonna use it as like an everyday carry? Like, how would you use this? And um, that's it, subscribe, leave me a comment. I would love that so very much. Today is the, today when I'm filming is not this day, but the day that you guys see this will be the 23rd of March. So it should be Wednesday, the 23rd of March. I am going to end this on the 31st of March, just to round it up. And I will announce the winner on April 1st. It's a Friday, it's the new day of a month. I know it's April Fools, but we're just gonna start off April new. And then whoever the winner is can DM me and I will send that out to my lovely winner. So I'm going to end it in a week and a day, the 31st, and I'll announce the winner on the 1st of April. And I think that should give everybody enough time to enter. So yeah, so here is my giveaway planner. I really, really hope you guys like it. I really hope that whoever wins this, it brings you joy and uh I don't know. It's so cool. I love feeling it. It's so cool. But yeah, so for everyone that asked me for a video on how I make my leather planners, uh, that's coming up next. For those of you that are just here for the giveaway, thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Stay tuned for the announcement on April 1st on who won this planner, and I will see you guys next time. For those of you that are here for the tutorial, it's not a tutorial. <laughs> for those of you that are here to learn how I make my leather planners, that will be up next. A few things, <sighs> not a professional. I do not do this for money. I don't even know if I'm doing this correctly. <laughs> um, but if you just want like a messy, here's how I do it, you can follow along to some of it if you need to. That's perfect. Stay, stay with us, please. I am going to tell you guys what I use. I'm going to tell you the tools that I use. So first things first, I have a cutting mat and I bought the biggest one because that's the one that came with the ruler and the rotary blade on Amazon. Uh, reminder, I am in Canada. So all of my links will be Canadian Amazon because that's where I shop. So I bought a cutting mat. It says it's self healing, um, but all the holes would say otherwise. which you guys probably can't see, but yeah. So I bought myself a big giant cutting mat. I think it's 12 by, no, it's 18 by 24. It's foot and a little bit by two feet. And then it comes with the 24 by six inch ruler and it's got the orange side and the clear side. And it also came with the rotary blade, which I absolutely love. So that came together. I will try to link that one. I don't know if it's still like a thing, but I have that. You will also need some um, needles. That's what these are called, needles. I only use this middle one right here. And I actually bought this one in a pack of 20 from Michaels because I broke my original needle and I've broken about six needles. So I would go buy the pack of 20 needles from Michaels because they were like 6.99. It's great. Along with your needles, you will need you will need thread. <laughs> um, the leather making kit that I bought actually came with five or six things of thread. I've just used up a few of them. So I've used up my brown and I've used up my beige. I, think, I guess it came with five. So my brown's gone. I don't know why I'm saving this. I'm going to throw that out. But my leather kit came with all of this thread. So you shouldn't need to buy it separately until you run out, obviously. Um, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is this guy because he obviously wants to be part of the conversation, but I lost the little thing out of it. Where in the heck ski did that go? Okay, I have no idea where that went. It has a little uh, L bracket that looks like a uh, Allen key that fits in it that lines up to the edge of your leather. This is an edger. I think that's actually what it's called And I can't remember if this came with my leather kit or if I had to buy this separately for some reason I think I had to buy it separately. You do not need this You can draw a straight line with something else. You don't need this um, This is just something that I like because it gives me a straight line to 
do my stitching with. You don't need this. This is an optional thing. All right, so let me talk about my leather kit that I got. It came with a bunch of stuff that I didn't need and don't need, I don't use. I actually have this little like thing from the dollar store that I set all my stuff in. The things I do use all the time though are my punches. So these are my stitching punches and this all came in a kit and I'll have it linked down below. So these are four millimeters apart, these little tongy things, they're sharp as hell. And my kit came with a six tong, a four tong, a two and a one. I use them all the time and actually this six tong one I use so much that it's the edge is really bent from hitting it with the hammer. That's another thing that you need is a hammer. You need a hammer to do this. Ah, here are, oh it was a 10 pack. This is what I bought from Michaels. It's a 10 pack. Very cheap. Um, the other thing that came with my leather kit was one of these. So this I'm not going to be able to like show you very well, but it's a hole punch and I have leather stuck in it. But it punches my holes for my strings. Uh, it's also useful if you want to do snaps. Don't need to. My kit did come with a snap um, punch kit. I've only used it twice. I don't really know if I'm doing it correctly. Here is the thing for my edger that I thought fell off with it. So this gives you like a length edger. Okay, sorry, off topic. Um, what else do I use? I have a couple binder clips in here that I used at the beginning, but like I will say in my video, I don't use them anymore because they don't let me line it up very well. These are all the things that came with my edger. I've never used them. I don't know what they're for. They've never come out of the bag. They just stay in the bag. Um, you will need, well, you won't need, I need a leather glove. So I keep a leather glove, a rubber glove. I keep my gloves from dishwashing. I, I have really, really sensitive hands. I wash the dishes with gloves. These are just from the dollar store. Um, I keep them. If one gets a hole and the other one doesn't, I keep it. So this just happened to be one that I had kept. I grabbed it out. It's the right hand. It's the one that I pull the needle with. Because your thread is waxed, your needle gets slippery and it's really hard to pull it out. And honestly, it hurts the pads of my thumb and my finger. And you can see that hole is from pulling the needle through. So I use this rubber glove. You don't need it. It's super helpful though. Uh, if you are going to be doing anything intricate, I would grab some leather glue. I don't use this very often. I'll talk about that later. This I grabbed on Amazon. It's Aileen's Original Leather and Suede Glue, so it works on those like suede type leathers. I do have that. And if you're going to make TNs uh, or even closures for like notebook covers, you're going to need some elastic. I will link this one. This is the best one I found. It was expensive. I think it did come from China. It was like $18.99, but it's a big spool, so there's that. Um, like I said, my kit came with a lot of things that I just don't know what they are or how to use them. So my kit came with these, which I think are for dye. I don't dye my leather, so I don't use those. It came with a buffering, edge bufferer, which I've tried to use, but I don't think I'm doing it right, so I just never use that. I also bought myself some corner rounders, but these are the wrong kind. I need one that's less round and more angled, so I don't use those because they're wrong. Um, and I also tried this. So I didn't, I didn't want to be banging the hammer. It freaks the dog out, and quite frankly, it's going to wreck our table, although our table is from the, the garage, and I, we didn't pay for it, so it doesn't super matter. Um, but I bought this. So you can see it's got the punches for the thread and it's also got this side which is like a rubbery the punches just go into it right so I tried this for a few projects it doesn't like it works it works it's fine hurts my hand after a little while and it gets stuck really bad in the leather and you can change this out it's just in there by a magnet so it comes out quite a bit gets stuck in your leather but I have that um, and then my leather kit also came with all of these things and I have no idea what they are. I don't know. 
I, I don't use them ever. It also came with three nail files, which I should actually use for my nails because my nail file is getting um, shitty. And then it came with these like finger thimbles, which don't go on my fingers because apparently my fingers are fat. But yeah, so those are all the things that came in my leather kit. The things that I use are the things that I keep on this top tray. So all of the stuff I just pulled out from the bottom tray, I don't use and I'm not sure why I'm keeping, but I don't know. I always think like, well, what if you get more into it and you learn what those are and they're useful and then you have to buy another one, which I should just, it should just be fine. I should, you know, but I don't really go into this bottom part, so it doesn't super matter. Like I just kind of close it. What's, what is that saying? Out of sight, out of mind. So yeah, so I will go into like what I do, how I make it. I'll kind of show you how to do this X pattern thing that my aunt taught me how to do the other day when she was here and we were crafting together. Um, but again, reminder, I am not a professional. I do not do this for money. I'm a teacher. That's, that is my profession. I'm a teacher, but I'm also a creative um, cheapo. So that's, that's why I know how to do this because out of, out of necessity, and uh, want <laughs> and the fact that I'm cheap so please take this with a grain of salt please take this mostly as entertainment I know some of you had asked to see me do this so this is for you those of you that wanted to see this this is not a tutorial <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoy it anyways and if you need you know if you learn something from it cool I'm gonna have link down below where I learned to stitch I'm also going to have the elastic video linked down below because I still watch that. I watch it over and over and over again. I probably watch it like 40 times, just restringing TNs and stuff. So, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you guys are having a great March. We're going to be uh, almost done by the time this video goes up, but I hope it was great anyways. I'm so excited for spring. I keep seeing like little glimpses of spring and I'm just so excited and our snow is finally melting. Um, let me know down below where you guys are from and if you have snow and if spring is where you are because I would love to hear about all of the spring things. But yeah, this is the thing that I bought from the dollar store. It kind of looks like one of those like caboodle things. It's not, I paid $4 for it, so. But yeah, hope you guys have a great week. I hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you at the end of her. If you make it that far, this is going to be a long one. So grab a drink, grab your project, whatever you need, and enjoy. Bye, guys. All right, y'all. So here I am. The first thing you have to do is obviously find the leather you want to work with. This is one of my favorite leathers. It's one of the first leathers that I ever bought. And this is the one that started it all. And you can see that I have my cutting mat and my ruler and my rotary knife. Those are the tools that I spend, I feel like the most time with. These are the tools that I start off with. And a trick I learned very early on is that if you line your straight, your straightest edge up with your cutting mat and then line your ruler up with the lines on your cutting mat, you will get a straight corner you'll get two straight edges and then you can work off those two straight edges to create your third and fourth straight edge and obviously like I don't have a square with me so that's kind of what I'm using as a square and I don't know if I talked about the sharpie I don't know if I got the sharpie out but Another tool that is really useful or that I find very useful is a metallic Sharpie and that's because it stands out on most leathers. I find that pen sometimes will not mark on the leathers, especially if you have a fluffy backed leather like this leather is. The shinier leathers like I have here with the purple and the green, I do find those have a smoother side so pen will mark a little bit easier on those. But with the fluffy backed leathers, they really do, like you need a Sharpie. And the metallic ones just tend to stand out. So you can see here that I didn't have quite enough leather. I had this angle here and I thought, well, let's add a pop of color. Let's make this a full square that I need to make an A6 notebook. 
and let's add this beautiful green and actually my aunt is the one that said I think you should add the green and then I realized that the green and brown really do go together they're two natural colors obviously and my aunt is here with me we tend to craft together and this is her explaining how to do X's and I was like okay and you'll see later that she draws on my little sticky note for me <laughs> to show me how to do it so I'm really thankful that she was there and she was able to teach me that little technique. She, um, she sews and she just started quilting and she had asked me about leatherworking probably, probably about a year ago now because she wanted to make leather goods for Christmas presents. She tends to like make Christmas presents, which I've always loved because I always get like cool knitted products out of it, which is really nice and really thoughtful and stuff. So you can see her like trying to explain the holes to me. So basically what I did is I, I'm going to get my edger out and I marked where I wanted to put my holes. So that's what the edger is for. It's to make sure that you have a straight line to mark your holes in. So I have my stitching punches out as well and I'll have to get my one punch <clears throat> and it's hilarious. You guys will notice this if you are leather making kind of the same way that I am the four hole punch or the four stitching punch and the six st stitching punch I find take much more effort to get through the leather. The one stitching punch and the two, like the one with one prong and two prongs, go through the leather and I've actually had it go through my mat and through my table which is hilarious with like one hit. So be really careful <laughs> when you're hitting with the the single one and the double one so yeah so she's explaining here what I should do with the X's so basically I'm marking out with the four punch and I'm gonna punch every second hole so they're not gonna be four millimeters together they're not gonna be that close together they're going to be eight millimeters apart so I'm only punching every second hole and that way I can go back and forth and form that X so I'm going to go through and punch every second hole and then obviously I'm going to do that on the other piece of leather as well, the green piece.
All right, so now that I have all my holes that I need punched, I am going to measure out my thread. So the way I do it is I go back and forth with the thread five times. So I do five times the length of wherever I'm stitching. So in this case, it's just that little piece. So I went from one side to the other five times. That's what I do. I find I don't run out of leather, or I don't run out of leather. I don't run out of thread. Uh, I do end up with quite a bit left. And especially you'll see when I go around the notebook, I end up with quite a bit left. But what happens at the end of your thread is that it gets kind of gross from being pulled in and out, in and out, in and out of your leather on your needle. So I like to just be able to get rid of that because <laughs> it does look kind of gross. <laughs> All right, and here is where the rubber glove comes in. Uh, when you're first going through your holes, they're quite tight especially if you haven't punched all the way through. It's different when you're punching with the single punch. Like I said, it goes through the leather very easily, but when you're punching with that punch that has four or six, then it's a little bit harder. So let's see if I can explain the X's to you in a way that makes sense. So basically you are doing the same method of sewing. So you're going one way on one side and then coming back on the other side and you're going to go diagonally so instead of going to the hole above the hole that you just went through you're going to the next one and then you're going to go back down so in my case i started on the brown leather so i'm going to go back down to the brown leather skip a hole go through and then go diagonally so you're going to end up with these like half x's and they're all going to be in the same direction because when you come back you're going to be going in the other direction so i start my upward diagonal on my brown leather and then go into my green leather and then on the way back i'm going to be starting my downward diagonal on the green leather and going into the brown leather it's very difficult to explain and it's also very, very easy to screw up. So you have to really be paying attention. I screwed up a couple times and I had to take my thread out again, quite a few times actually. But once you do it and it starts looking like an X, you're like, oh, okay, I know how to do this. So you just really have to like get in there, get your thread in the leather, start making those diagonals, make a pattern, and then come back doing the opposite thing. So you can see, I'm gonna start on my green leather and I'm very confused. This is where I needed my aunt. I'm very thankful that she was there to help me <laughs> because I had some troubles with it. So I'm gonna start in my green and I'm gonna go downward diagonally to the next one. So I'm not going to the hole below it because it's all, it already has thread in it. I'm going to the next one. And you can see those X's start to form and this is just a really super fun and cool technique and it makes it very visually appealing and like dynamic and when i went back to do the other holes because i i had like skipped a hole you could go back with the same color thread but i went back in with a different color thread because i thought like that would make it very visually dynamic and just give it give it some character like nobody else would have anything that looked like this and not only that it's very uh structurally what's what are the words i'm trying to use like it's very structurally sound <laughs> it's gonna keep that piece of leather secure and safe on there and it also looks really cool so it's a win-win
So after I've got all of my thread done, I am going to decide what I want to do for pockets. And pockets are a little funny because they're much easier if you have a thinner piece of leather. So I was thinking about that because I did have some thinner leather. It was this brown, but I ultimately decided that I didn't want to bring in too many colors that it would just look ridiculous. <laughs> And before I tell you about my pockets, I'm going to tell you about finding your center hole for your elastic. So I line up my ruler with opposite corners, do it with the other side and make a little line where I think the middle is. And then that those two lines are going to make an X. And then I just punch my hole through the middle there. And that's where I put my middle elastic. Don't know how I figured that out. I think I figured it out on my own, <laughs> but uh, it works. So that's how I find the middle and I'm not going to poke my holes for the elastics for the notebooks until I've done my thread all the way around and that's specifically so I know where those holes need to be, how far into the notebook they need to be. So I did ultimately decide that I wanted to use the same brown, the same green, I wanted to pull the green inside the notebook and I also decided that I really wanted to stay true to what I love, which is raw edges. So I did do that with the brown and the green, and I made some pockets. For card slot pockets, I take a card, so a gift card or whatever, and I mark the edges, and you'll see me mark the edges with my Sharpie. I'm going to poke holes where I made those marks, and then I'm just going to cut a line between those holes, and that'll be the card slot. I did want to quickly mention that the audio that you're about to hear next is actually a clip that I filmed with me sitting down, uh, but it made the video way too long and I wasn't doing anything, I wasn't doing any, any uh, making towards this notebook, so I thought I would just take the audio and put it over something that I de didn't necessarily need to talk through, so my pocket making, uh, but I thought it was really important to keep it in here because it makes a few points that I think are important about like why I started and you know being curious and creative and things so I did really want to leave it in here for you just over uh, me making my pockets because I really don't need to talk through this I just measure it out and I actually measured it out with my pen I just marked where I wanted it to sit I kept my raw edge I made three card slot pockets in this brown and one in my green and I just sew those on with the thread that I'm going to put all the way around the notebook I like to do this in one go so that's what I'm going to do and I thought I would just leave my audio in here so hopefully you're doing something else and you just want to um, mindlessly listen because I'm about to waffle on so thank you guys so much for being here and I hope you enjoy. That was what it was. I wanted a leather notebook. I didn't have $200 to spend on it and I was like I want to go see how much a hide of leather is. Like how much is it to buy leather? Leather has to be expensive if these notebooks are $100. Well I went on I found a Canadian leather seller uh, that's in Saskatchewan and I went like I went to a sales section and he had he had hides of leather on for three dollars you know like a 12 by 12 uh, inch piece you know so then I was like okay well this is the sale price let me go and see the the, the full price well they range from six dollars to twenty eight dollars for a 12 by 12 piece and that's like a good piece of leather you know I bought some bison for like 16 for a foot by foot piece square foot square foot square foot that's what the, that's what it's called you know and that's not to say like go out and buy your own square foot of leather and make a notebook because not everybody can do it I, well that's not true everybody could do it everybody might not want to do it or have the time to do it or you know and if you have the money for it buy it you know, I, well, once I got the money for it, I bought it. But it was nice to have something in the meantime, while I didn't have the money for it, when I was saving for it, to kind of scratch that itch. But it's hard work. It, it takes a lot of work. I can sit down and get one done in like six hours. And that's like within an hour. Those, those are like two hour stints because sitting for this long tends to hurt my back. 
So, you know, I can finish one in a day. But, I mean... Like, if you look at Hearth and Hide, for example, in Perfectly Perfect, like, she has these beautiful, like, they're, they're like, they have, like, patterns on the front. I don't even know how she does it. Like, I couldn't even, I couldn't even begin to, to, to guess at how she does it, honestly. And, like, a leather sewing machine, like, if you didn't want to sew all of these by hand, a leather sewing machine is, like, $6,000. Ridiculous. That's crazy. So, yeah. Yeah. You need to sell some notebooks before you got yourself a leather sewing machine, you know? And I think I started this with, I know you guys want me to do like a tutorial, like how do you make them? But I'm not a leather maker, I'm not a leather creator, I don't know what I'm doing. This is just what I do. It's probably all wrong. I've learned, I know my sewing is right because I learned that from a video on YouTube. But the way I'm doing it is, is probably wrong. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I don't do this for money. I don't do this for any other reason than I'm impatient and cheap. And this allows me to be both of those things. It allows me to be impatient and it allows me to be cheap. I'm impatient. I don't want to wait three months for a notebook. I do, but I don't want to. So I make my own while I'm waiting and I'm cheap. At one point I couldn't afford it. You know, like right now I can afford it. Do I really want to spend it? Not really, but this is an easier alternative than spending money I don't have. That was a rabbit hole. I'm gonna go switch my sticker sheets and finish this up. All right, y'all, so it is the next day. I didn't really get to talk to you guys yesterday. I had my aunt with me when I started this and I didn't want to um, just be talking to a camera because some people think it's weird, right? So this is what I have so far done. I frigging love this. I'm absolutely in love with this like X pattern. My aunt taught me how to do this and I love this like little piece of different leather. Now this was born out of necessity because I didn't have a piece of leather large enough but this is so freaking cool. I was actually thinking about taking this side off and adding purple leather but I decided I'm just gonna do the green so there's not too many colors. And then I have my pocket here on one side and three card pockets, one card pocket on this side with the green. And this is the same green that is on the front there. So I started sewing. I didn't really get to tell you guys like how I do the sewing. I feel like I've mentioned this in a different video. So I do the, I don't even, I don't know if there's a technical name for it, but I do the back and forth sewing and I do it as I go because it makes it easier like the piece stays on a little bit better so I take my thread and I pull one side through halfway so I have an equal amount of thread on either side and then I do one side so you go down and then back up and then down and then back up and you go through each hole and then you do the other side and if you went down on the first one well then obviously you're coming up on the other side and that's how it makes one continuous line of thread and I use wax uh, thread so it goes through the leather easier and you probably saw me with my glove I do use just like a rubber dish glove that it, it, I probably had a hole in it and I saved them but it's always the right one that has a hole in it or doesn't no I don't know whatever I needed the right one. It hurts the pad of my uh, thumb and my forefinger when I'm trying to pull the needle through. So I just wear the glove so it's not as slippery. Obviously wax thread makes it slippery. And then I have my punches. So obviously I don't just push this needle through the leather. You guys probably saw me with my punch and my hammer. But yeah, so I'm just going to finish up doing the thread. I will go all the way around. I did give myself enough thread to just go all the way around the book. So I'll go around the edge here. But yeah, I'm just gonna go through and I usually punch about two of these. So that's about 12 holes. 
and then string them and then punch and then string and then punch and then string. So I'm just gonna kind of go through. I'm sitting at my kitchen table. This is where I do my my uh, leather work. My kitchen table is from the paint shop at my husband's work. So it's not fancy. We didn't pay for it. It's, you know, it's kind of rickety anyways. So we don't worry too much. Most of the leather that I use, I can mark it up with this. So I just kind of like make my marks and then I'll go through with the hammer. And I now have the tripod on the table. So probably every time I do that, it's going to shake you guys. So I'm probably going to have to cut that out. But yeah, I'm just going to speed this up, put a little bit of music on it. It's kind of the same thing. I mark and then I put it on the holes and then I hit it and then I'm gonna sew and I'll kind of zoom in on the sewing for you. Um, but I'm gonna watch a Kendall Ray true crime thing while I do this. So hopefully this isn't too boring for you guys. So I'm just going to get this to focus. So you can see there, so I went down and now I'm going to come back up on the next hole here. It's obviously very hard for the camera to focus on this. And then I'm going to go down the next hole, up the next hole, down the next hole, etc., etc. So obviously you're not looping back, you're just going up and then you're gonna take the other string and fill in these holes. So you can see there will be string there, it'll just be this string, it'll be the opposite string, so yeah. Alright guys, so I decided to switch up the angle of the camera because that's the only way this video is going to be interesting in the slightest. I have my silhouette machine cutting in the background. You can hear the fan. You can probably hear the heat pump defrosting. I'm a mess. <laughs> I'm on day three, three of this project. I sewed the rest of this up last night, the top here. It looks really good and I'm tempted to not give this away. I know I've said that already, but I'm very tempted. Um, so one lesson that I have learned that I did not follow my own advice is I made my mark on this inside piece. So 
It's nice to have all of the lines straight, but with thick leather like this, it's really, really hard to get, especially if you're punching from the inside. I should have really made my line on the outside and done it that way. And it's different with this suede leather because you can't really see the line um, after a little while. Like it comes out of the suede leather. This you can see and you're gonna see forever. So I will punch my holes on this side, but, and I guess it depends on what which lines you want to be straight. Like in a perfect world, we want both lines to be straight, but with the thick leather, it's really hard when you're just using a hand punch and a hammer, and I'm gonna tell you that right now. So if you are making your own project right now, <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Make your line on the outside of the project. If that's where you want the straight lines to be, outside of your project, it's harder to see like if your pocket is lined up correctly but it's cons and pros to everything. So I'm gonna make my holes for the stitching around this pocket, get this pocket on. I am determined to get this project done today. It is a Friday and I would love to just spend time with my husband on the weekend. And like I could do that even if I wasn't on this project, but I'm one of those people that like feel, feels guilty <laughs> at things. And I would love to get this done and up and, you know, give you guys a chance to win it. Even if, if you even want to win it, right? I don't know. I think it looks cool, but you guys might not. I also took the tripod off of the table. So every time I hit the hammer, it wouldn't shake it. I'm hoping that is, uh, that's what I get. So I'm going to put holes in it, going to stitch it. probably going to watch some planner videos at the same time. Yeah. Watch me put holes in leather. So something that I've started doing is actually poking the holes and then sewing. So I'll poke like, you know, two of these, so like 12 holes, and then I'll sew them. And then I'll poke 12 more holes and then I'll sew them. And that just kind of keeps it in place. Cause when you go all the way around, like it's gonna move. And when I first started doing this, I tried to use like binder clips. I've even tried glue. I don't like the glue. The glue gets everywhere. I have the glue. Um, the glue gets everywhere like on the inside and then afterwards when you try to slide your book in, sometimes you can't get your book all the way because like glue has come out and like spread more than you wanted to, like more than the edge. And I don't know what like the professional notebook makers do. I'm sure they use glue, but I'm sure they have a better way to apply it than I do. And I'm sure they have like a method. I don't use glue on any of my planners. I think I used glue on one planner and I used glue on this one up here on this corner, just so it would stay together. And, but I don't use glue on like my pockets and I don't use glue like, you know, on that kind of stuff. If I need something to stay in place, I will use like a little bit of glue. Like I did an A5 um, ring bound one and I wanted to do a snap closure. So you needed to put like an arm on and I wanted to glue it before I sewed it just so it was like in the right place. But I didn't need to, like I could have done this method, but this was before I started doing it this way. This is the way my aunt does it. Um, and I don't know, she's an act, she's, she's actually like a, a sewer, like she sews stuff. So she like, she makes my masks and stuff. So I don't know, like she had just said one day like, oh, I've been going, I've been like punching the holes and then sewing as I go. So it stays in place. And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. And then I started doing it. And, you know, it just makes the use of glue kind of null and void.
right guys so putting the last stitch in I'm kind of trying to do something new with the knot I hate having to knot the, the thread off I don't know why I find it makes it look stupid but I'm trying to kind of like hide it underneath the pocket this time and I feel like I stitched it in such a way that it's actually gonna work this time I usually try to hide it underneath the pocket but sometimes it just doesn't work but I'm not gonna show you like how I do that. I literally just make a knot and cut it off and that's it. But what I do want to show you is how I string with elastic. So, bought this off Amazon. I think it was $18.99. Um, I bought string like I bought elastic off of Amazon and I find that it's not the right like TN elastic I don't know how to explain it like if you have a traveler's notebook you know but I found it like wasn't the right um, stretchiness or the right width or anything but this is two millimeter elastic and it is perfect and it's brown the last elastic I got was rainbow and most of the leather I work with is brown <laughs> so I wanted just like plain brown elastic I would like some like beige elastic too but I can't find any but that is all right I just I haven't been creating and a friend of mine on Instagram sent me some blue stuff and that was really nice because it's the same stuff so I was able to like verify that I'm not crazy and this is correct elastic so I take my elastic and I wrap it around the traveler's notebook and I pull it taut a little bit because I like my elastics a little bit tighter so I know that everything's going to stay in. And then I tie the knot at the end and then I just shove it through my middle part here. Like that and I, like I said, I like it to be a little bit tighter. So that's what it looks like really super cute I think it looks so cool and then I'm going to put three holes at the top here and three holes at the bottom so it can be a uh, four string TN and I'm gonna do that now actually so what I do is to get my center um, hole I take my ruler and you guys actually probably saw me do this yesterday but I take my ruler which is ginormous and I make an X so I lay it from corner to corner make a line do the other corner make a line and where they meet up is obviously the middle and then to do the top dots usually I have a template and I will do that online so it's all in the middle and stuff but I didn't make a template for this because I've made a lot of a6 TNs I have my Sharpie. I take a metallic Sharpie because it shows up on the leather. And I have my hole lined up with one of my lines. I have it um, straight on the bottom so I know that this will be lined up square because I do not have a square. And then I line it up with whatever line is in the middle here. And I'm actually going to take my pen. So I'm going to go in with my pen first, make a line. With this type of leather, it just kind of makes a mark, like it doesn't make a line. And doing the, the holes for the strings afterwards means that your stitching is in, you're not too far into where you want your stitching to be, you know exactly where your stitching is, and you can just punch your hole underneath your stitching. Um, and then I'm just going to do holes beside it. I wasn't going to measure this out because this is ridiculously large, but maybe I will. Alright, 
so there are my holes. I'm gonna put my center elastic back in. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab this elastic. So I always do this from a, the same video on YouTube. I will link that. And let's see if I can do it without watching the video. That might not be right. Um, I'm actually gonna link the video for you guys because I don't, I'm not very good at explaining stuff like this. So I'm just gonna link it for you so you can watch it. And she actually has like how to restring all of them. So she has like a single string, a double string, uh, two holes, four holes, three holes, six holes, like all, all the holes. So, and basically like you start up the center and you go halfway up the center and then you go down the back through the center. And then up the front and then back down the center and that's how you get uh, that double center. So it's like halfway down the center to start and then halfway down the center to end. And you should always burn your ends. I just don't have a lighter on me currently and I don't wanna get up and get it. Okay, and then I kind of screw around with the strings until they are the correct uh, tightness that I like. I don't like them to be too tight because then it, it like bends the notebook this way, but I want it to bend it like the slightest bit because then it keeps the paper notebooks tighter in the book. And then when I tie my knot, I pull it tighter than I want it to be because when I tie my knot, I want to pull it back this way. And I usually have to do this like four or five times because I f it up every time. If you have made it this far through the video, I want to thank you. You are the real MVP. I appreciate you. <laughs> I also want to remind you that I am not a professional. I do this for me, for fun, and the only reason I know how to do this is because I literally just bought the leather, tried it, and failed a whole bunch. So if you're serious about like wanting to try this and do this for yourself, then find, find a local leather shop, buy the leather you like, and just try it. I will have some stuff linked down below, like kind of what I started with. And it's just, it's basic stuff. Like you need some punches, you need a hammer. Um, you don't even need like the, the thing that makes your line for your stitching. You don't need this. I just wanted my stitching to be straight, but you don't need that. And like I have something for uh, snaps and things and you don't need that either. If you're not gonna do snaps, you don't need to buy that. You, you do kind of need a cutting mat and a ruler and a, a rotary blade, super helpful. But, and you need thread if you're gonna sew them. So, okay, I can't get that. So there it is. That's what she's looking like. I think it looks really cute. It's got three, part co three, three <laughs> card pockets on the side, one on this side, and then the two big pockets. It's got the raw edges. If you guys have followed me for any amount of time, you know I love me some raw edges. I, it just it shows the character of the leather. And then it's got an elastic. It's got four strings on the inside, and this suede leather is one of my favorites. It was the first leather I ever bought, and it's the softest. Like You just want to cuddle it. I'm just saying. It's so soft. But there she is. I'm so proud of myself. I don't want to give this to you guys. No, I do. I really do want to give this to you guys. I'll, all jokes aside, it's beautiful. I've never done anything like this. It's so cool. I'm very excited. So if you guys stayed for this tutorial, I'm not calling it a tutorial, but if you guys stayed 
uh, to watch how I make my leather notebooks. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for being here and part of this community. It's so funny. I did um, an interest project with my kids uh, during online learning and I did an example for them and I wrote, you know, like if I was doing this, if Mrs. Dixon was doing this, she would write, you know, uh, one of my interests is teaching, one of my interests is planning, and another interest is um, music. Like these are my three interests. And then we had to go into like, why do you like this interest? Who guided you towards this interest? And I talked a lot about like nobody really guided me, well my teachers did because they all, we always got a planner in school. but. I talked about how like the planner community can kind of be um, a negative place at times there's a lot of stuff uh, but at the end of the day like I have cultivated a community around me of like-minded people that get me that know you know know who I am and that are just like me and that's really cool because I don't have a lot of people in my real life that are like me so all that to say, I really, really appreciate appreciate you guys being here, and I just hope you have a great day, and I hope whoever wins this little beauty loves her as much as I do, because this is so cool. I can't wait to do this again. I'm really glad my aunt was here when I started this, so she could teach me how to do this, but yeah. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Bye, y'all.